everyone, it's Agronath here from Return of the Fan, and uh, got some more follow-up on the Alec Baldwin uh, shooting tragedy that's occurred in the US. Um, if for some somehow you haven't come across the story before, um, there was an accidental shooting on the set of Alec Baldwin's uh, new movie called Rust. Um, I did a previous video on that, so if you wish to um, uh, learn what the circumstances was, then you can um, maybe stop and watch that recording first and then come back um, otherwise we're going to carry on and um, there's been some information about some of the problems that's been happening on the set and it just sounds like that this was a tragedy that was waiting to happen unfortunately um, and it's just really sad that some amazing person has lost their life because of the problems that uh, has been going on on the set and hopefully someone is going to be held accountable um, considering that Alec Baldwin is the producer, or one of the producers for the movie, he should ultimately carry the can as far as I'm concerned because it's his movie, um, he should have made sure that everything is correct. So Alec Baldwin shooting, star stunt double also accidentally fired live ammunition before the tragedy occurred. Set had experienced two prior accidental firearms discharges an anonymous worker claimed. So I guess these are allegations, they haven't been proven or anything. But there's been quite a few of these things coming out um, and it makes you think that some of these things must have a grain of truth to it, right? A stunt double for Alec Baldwin reportedly fired two rounds of live ammunition days before the Hollywood actor fatally shot cinematographer Helena Hutchins, according to a report. An anonymous worker told ABC News concerns about gun safety had been raised with producers also claiming that there had been two accidental firearms discharges before the fatal incident, including with the stunt double. So that sounds pretty serious, right? You would have thought that they would have kicked their ass into gear um, and they would have been doubly doubly sure about anything that was going to be ha happening on the um, set of the filming. A gun fired by star Alec Baldwin killed Ms. Hutchins and wounded Joel Souza, which we already know about. Um, Bolden released the statement saying he's fully, fully cooperating with the police. Well, of course he's going to say that. Um, so uh, let's carry on. So the director Rust speaks out, issues statement. So this is the director that was shot, um, issued his first statement following his hospitalization for a gun shoot wound. Um, so Mr. Bolden, who co-wrote, produced the stars in the film, discharged a prop firearm on the set, reportedly striking. Mr. Sousa's shoulder and Miss Hutchins who was flown to a nearby hospital where she was pronounced dead. Um, so here's another interesting thing. Uh, a lawmaker has questioned if laws would have stopped the incident. Um, so I don't know whether, I mean there must have laws in place that would stop these sorts of things, right? So maybe it just sounds like that um, things weren't followed correctly, the rules, the guidelines weren't followed correctly because there have been as we just read before, there were some incidents that occurred beforehand, right? So everyone's calling this a prop gun, so we should actually have a look at what the definition of a prop gun actually is to give us a better understanding of the procedures that when you're using any type of firearm, whether it's a prop firearm or a real firearm, on the set of a movie. So uh, let's have a look at this article here, which kind of goes of what a prop firearm is. So it's a loose definition and could apply to anything from a rubber toy to a real firearm that can fire a projectile. However, if it's used for firing even just blanks, it is considered a real gun. So even a gun that fires blanks is actually a real gun. It's just that a blank is a type of gun cartridge that contains gunpowder but no bullet. But essentially you're firing it in a real firearm, right? Even though you're firing blanks. So... Um, a prop um, gun is a little bit different. A prop gun is like a, a rubber mold. It could actually never fire something. But generally, the term prop gun covers everything which is a firearm on the set, right? Still, a uh, gun firing blanks can seriously hurt or kill someone who is close by, according to the Actors' Equity Association. Film firearm safety coordinator Dave Brown wrote a 2019 piece for American cinematographer about gun safety on set. 
Blanks expel gunpowder and hot gases out the front of the barrel in a cone shape. This is harmless at longer ranges, but the explosion can seriously injure someone if it's too close. Police are still determining what kind of projectile killed Helena Hutchins on set. So now we know that it was actually a real live round of ammunition. Okay, so um, somehow someone put real live ammunition in that gun. Maybe the gun was not supposed to be used for that particular scene or whatever. But somehow it got into the hands of Alec Baldwin who fired the weapon. What are the rules for using firearms on set? So, you know, these are... Who knows whether they're rules or guidelines or actually laws and so on. But it depends on state by state. So generally a weapons master or armourer oversees all weapons that are used on a production. Weapons masters are required to abide by state and federal laws and hold proper operating permits. Well, that seems, that seems pretty reasonable. Of course, you'd have to have something like that. This can mean anything from selecting the correct items for a certain period in history to taking care of the weapons on set and making sure that they are being used safely and properly by actors and stunt performers. It's a new position in the history of film production. Prior to the 1980s, the prop master handled all props. So, uh, yeah, so the weapons master or weapons armorer, I assume their role is specifically just for anything which would be counted as a weapon, um, and then um, the prop master will be all other types of props which are on the set. Recently, it's become common to enlist specialists. The weapons master is required to be on set whenever a weapon is being used, so you would assume the weapon master must have been on the set during that scene. According to the Actors' Equity Association guidelines, a gun must be test-fired off stage and then by the actor involved before each use. So I guess that's a guideline. It's not a law or anything. But maybe they need to be more stricter on that, right? Because if they test-fired it by the um, armourer and by the actor, they would have known that it contains live ammunition. So it sounds like that that was not being done. So it sounds like things weren't being adhered to correctly and um, we'll get to some another article which talks about the state of um, the production. All loading of firearms must be done by the, the property master, armorer or an experienced person working under the direct under their direct supervision. Armory coordinator Sam Dormer said all weapons would be checked before blanks were added. The blanks themselves are never loaded until the very last minute when all crew is in position so the armor knows exactly where every member of the crew is. This ensures no one walking through any danger areas the armor has set up. Well that, that seems, you know, a no-brainer, right? That's what should be happening, but it sounds like that this hasn't been adhered to on the set of Rust, so someone has to take um, responsibility for this. And hopefully they're going to be taken into account and not be let off with a wet bus ticket. They need to make an example of this. Why would an actor point a gun at a cin cinematographer? So obviously you would have to be pointing the gun at the cinematographer for um, them to be shot. We don't know what happened on the set of Russ, but it's quite common to have a gun pointed at the camera and then by extension the cinema cinematographer. So basically the cinematographer is by the camera because that's their job. So when you're pointing the gun at the camera, because it looks like you're pointing the gun at the audience, then obviously you're also pointing the gun at the cinematographer, depending on where they are, that they're actually um, standing. And this is the poor woman herself, Helena Hutchins, in, in that picture there. So I feel so sorry for her and her family. Uh, we've all seen very famous shots in films where you get the dramatic effect of the gun being pointed at you, the audience, and of course it's being pointed towards the camera. To minimise that, one would put a remote camera in that place, or if someone does have to operate the camera, they would be protected by safety goggles, a safety visor, and a perspex screen that withstands pretty much anything. So yeah, you'd think at least they would have some sort of a screen or um, bulletproof vest or something, right? Just in case something could actually happen. But it looks like all of those things were not being used on the set of this movie. So let's have a read about some problems that have been going on the set. So Rust Crew describes onset gun safety issues and misfires days before fatal shooting. So it sounds like that some problems have been going on for a while, but um, the people in charge of the movie have not um, dealt with it. Hours before actor Alec Baldwin fatally shot a cinematographer on the New York, New Mexico set of Rust with a prop gun. 
a half dozen camera crew workers walked off the set in protest to working conditions. So very, very interesting there. The camera operators and their assistants were frustrated by the conditions surrounding the low-budget film, including complaints about long hours, long commutes, and waiting for their paychecks, according to three people familiar with the matter who were not authorised to comment. So it sounds like these people have been worked to the bone for this particular movie, because it's a low-budget movie, so they obviously don't have enough money to pay people properly and um, to give them enough rest. So it sounds like that it's a recipe for disaster. You've got tired people, working long hours, your mind can't stay on the job um, as well as it should, and so things will happen. Safety protocol standards in the industry, including gun inspections, were not strictly followed on the Rust set near Santa Fe, the sources said. They said at least one of the camera operators complained last weekend to a production manager about gun safety on the set. So the people that were in the firing line, <laughs> the camera people, um, knew things weren't right. They tried to bring it up with the production manager and the producers, but nothing was done about it. Um, and sadly, this person lost her life when it could have been avoided. Three crew members who were present at the Bonanza Creek Ranch set on, set on, Saturday, set on Saturday said they were particularly concerned about two accidental prop gun discharges. Baldwin stunt double accidentally fired two rounds Saturday after being told that the gun was cold. Lingo for a weapon that doesn't have any ammunition, including blanks. Two crew, crew members who witnessed this episode told the Los Angeles. So there we go. So now we have some confirmation that what the stunt double person actually said was pretty much true. We've had corroboration from other people, right? There should have been an investigation into what happened, the crew member said. There were no safety meetings. There was no assurance that it would happen again. All they wanted to do was rush, rush, rush. So there we go. You try and rush people. You try and rush things. Mistakes are made. It comes down to the production people. And ultimately, I think Alec Bolden is one of the main producers. It's going to come down to him. Will he be sent to prison for this? Somehow I doubt it, being he's a big Hollywood actor, star. But I guess we will see. A colleague was so alarmed by the prop gun misfires that he sent a text message to the unit production manager. We've now had three accidental discharges. This is super unsafe, according to a copy of the message reviewed by the Times. So that it was brought up, but it was just wasn't taken care of by the production managers. This is ridiculous. The safety of our cast and crew is the top priority of Rush Productions and everyone associated with the company, Rust Movie Productions, said in a statement. Though we were not made aware of any official complaints concerning weapon or prop safety on set, we will be conducting an internal review of our procedures while production is shut down. We will continue to cooperate with, cooperate with Santa Fe authorities in their investigation and offer mental health services to the cast and crew during this tragic time. So either um, the production managers didn't send this complaint up to the higher-ups, or um, they are trying to sweep it under the carpet. Either way, it looks bad for the producers of this particular movie. Um, this was only the 12th day of a 21-day shoot on the set. Uh, so that is just unbelievable. So there we go. We've got some more information about what's been happening. It sounds like the, um, the production wasn't adhering to the strict guidelines and recommendations looks like safety wasn't adhered to so someone needs to be held accountable for this so let me know what you think in the comment section do you think that someone's going to be held accountable for this or do you think that the big stars and the big wigs will get away with it um, i hope they don't get away with it i'd love to see some people held account for this and we need it to happen because we don't want this to happen again it's happened so many times before um, you know, we can't afford people losing their lives because of tragic accidents like this. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments section. I'd love to know. If you like this uh, video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, you're welcome to give me a thumbs down. If you like my content, please subscribe. It just helps um, the YouTube algorithm to notice my content, which would be muchly appreciated. And hopefully I will catch you in the next episode.